check this out lots of free parking right at the water at the water there's a yacht club over there and right in front of me is a bayfront park bayfront park it's still dark the sunset the sunrise is uh, in 10 minutes this is Hamilton Hamilton Ontario Canada and I figured I'm gonna take my uh, I'm gonna take my uh, new shiny camera D7500 and test it over here just wanna show you guys where we are so the blue dot that's me right so this is so it's planet earth US right this is US over here and this is Canada right this is Buffalo New York so we're about one hour west of Buffalo New York it's a town called Hamilton it's a big industrial town and Toronto is this way so here's Lake Ontario and there's lots of birds in here there's like a little bay so I came like came like this on Highway 6 and you see all this green stuff that's what I'm interested in and especially this so this Bayfront Park is right on the water so if I go straight there there's some trails you see like the trails go like this and that's the plan and then I want to go here this Pier 4 Park and that's Royal Hamilton Yacht Club over there so I want to go on these trails and see what I can find in terms of birds but also there's a trail here that goes right like this along the water and then it turns here see this is waterfront trail lookout point and it turns here and there's lots of birds on this side because see there's a little bridge in there you can get in here so it's like that's what I want to explore. I want to explore this area, but right now I'm in this Bayfront Park. But it's still too dark to shoot anything, you know? So I'm gonna sit for a few minutes, check my camera. Well, at least there's lots of seagull, you know? <laughs> Even those are great for, you know, for training, like shooting birds in flight, right? I was actually looking yesterday for some seagulls over there in Cambridge. Could not find any. Like there's one or two, but over here, as soon as the car parks, they're right there. I guess they're used to people feeding them something, so... Okay, see the sign says, uh, Waterfront Trail. So this should go... Wait a second. I think that's towards the harbor, Hamilton Harbor. That's my next step. For now, I want to go on this park. Like it's a huge trail. Okay, let's go check it out. Because yeah, over there, that's just a railroad. All right. Waterfront trail. Mm. <laughs> wow! Look at this. It goes all the way to Cornwall. <laughs> well, we're not going that far. See, I'm here. Yeah, okay, so this one goes over there. Yeah, like under the bridge. That's my next, like I said, that's my next step. That's too far. Okay, I see some cormorants, but I don't know. is fishing over there. It's still, still pretty dark. It's going underwater. I love these birds.
Oh shoot, I forgot to switch on my... Oh, oh, oh. Well, I think this camera with this lens performs better than my uh, previous one and then D500 and it also helps that I did uh, fine tuning. This is the... Check this out. This is so cool. And again, I've never been here. You know, I travel... I travel uh, in my truck on the sky bridge. And I knew there was something like this here because I see people, like I said, walking and biking. Don't be afraid. I already have plenty of pictures of you. Okay, let's go over there. They even have a beach in here. But it says beach closed for now. A couple of things I'm doing in a new way with this D7500. First of all, I decided to check the new uh, auto picture control. And I went in auto picture control to see if there's any adjustments. And it's, it has plus one and plus two. And so I chose plus one. So that gives you a bit extra saturation contrast. And so the camera decides by itself whether to choose vivid or portrait you know I think I think it's good works good so far and so I'm using just shutter button re release I'm shooting in uh, dynamic 25 so I choose this the focus point if the camera cannot focus over there it switches to one of the th surrounding uh, 25 points and for now I'm choosing continuous low advance and I set up that one for six frames a second so uh, continuous high is eight but I'm not even using that and what else I'm, I'm shooting in manual mode with uh, auto ISO and for these sitting birds I was just using like shutter speed 750 open aperture but if they start moving I'm gonna go to about 3500 4 thousandths of a second I think that's a kill deer over there
the seagulls, like the baby ones. They, uh, they have very nice colors. Oh, wait a second. Check this out. There's a heron over there near the post. Mm -hmm. Hiding in plain sight. Wow. Uh oh. Why are we not sharp? Okay, that's better. Wow, look at this. Beautiful. And I'm using, uh, what am I using? I'm using, uh, yeah, spot metering. See, works fine. Yeah, I see lots of killed deer. These small birds that are very fast. Okay, let's see if we can get closer to that. Heron over there. Oh, we're gonna... We're gonna pretend we're not interested. Otherwise it'll fly away. <laughs> That's eight frames a second for you. Wow. I wonder if any of them. What? Jeez. I wonder if any of them are sharp. Well, we'll know. We'll see on the computer. Actually, I just stopped here. I wanted to take a picture of that. those boats with a Canadian flag. Well, it's a bit dark, but it's still dark. The sun is uh, up, but it's behind clouds. Why am I shooting boats in spot metering? You know? Sometimes I forget. Okay, let's try. I have this uh, FN1 programmed for matrix metering. I saw 640. Well, same thing. It didn't change anything. So spot metering was was uh, good too. second there, I thought it was an osprey or something. Well, that's 
definitely not the seagull. But it's still underexposed. We're still in the Yeah, we're still on spot metering. Okay. One quick impression from using the D7500 instead of D500 is that it's noticeably lighter. You know, I just carry it like this. And uh, basically, I'm glad I switched back. I cannot believe that. I've never been here. You know, living in Canada since 1997, it's 2017 now, so 20 years, this is the first time I'm in this park. Yeah, and I don't think today I'll go under that bridge, because that's too far. So you see I'm here now. So we did a circle around this Bayfront Park. This is the boats over there. So I just want to go on this little road. And there's another park nearby called Pier 4 Park. And they also have a trail going around. Check this out. What is that? Is that some kind of a toy? No? That looks like a shark, but with uh, <laughs> three vertical fins. thing over there. Doesn't look a, like a seagull. Oh, it is a seagull. Well, it's some kind of unusual type. I also love, uh, love the sound of the shutter on this camera. It sounds a bit, I don't know, somehow nicer. Wow, well, look at this. Why we're not shooting, I have no idea. Okay, that's definitely an osprey. <laughs> and I'm just standing there. about to leave I see a huge heron sitting on the back of the boat check this out wow beautiful colors out of this camera A couple should be in, uh, at least a couple should be in, uh, I forget the name of that bird, but it's, it's not a seagull. Oh, 
the heron jumped on the pavement over there. That'll be an interesting. I'm just practicing. I know it's just a seagull, but huh. good location. Now to get to the park. You have to go through the marina. And I was not sure if that's allowed, so I saw a biker there. He stopped and I said trying to get to this park. Do you know if it's okay to go through here? Oh, he says, oh yeah, it's public access. He says, just uh, no vehicles. Let me see. Goose control area. Pyrotechnics and other goose management techniques will be deployed in this area to assist in controlling goose population. Alright. So basically, big guns can go off at any second. Ah, so it's a much smaller area. Let's double check here. Okay, yeah, so now I'm on this, going this little circle. But I like this, like this, some over there, you can get real close to the water. Let's see if we can find more critters. Right. See lots of guys on the uh, Boats. I know in Russian they're called Baidarka. Probably a canoe, but they're using two oars. Probably there was an oversupply. You know, normally you just use one oar, right? But when there's too many oars, somebody gotta use them. Yeah, okay, so that's one kind of like a point. <laughs> Let's go in there. Hello. See, the duck is. <laughs> trying to be it. It cannot dive. See, this is already too fast. So switching back to six. what these guys are doing here in Hamilton for the people you know it's all free yeah okay so that's the other kind of like point I want to go to and the air is very nice even though on the other side there's a bunch of steel factories
point is right on the eye. Thank you. Appreciate it. Out from behind the clouds. No, the sun is this way. I don't want to be shooting that one. I'm still trying to get more cameras flying, but they're so cautious, you know. But as soon as I raise the camera, it's gonna fly away. See that one in the water? Alright, I'll leave you alone. I think I should sit somewhere and wait for them to come to me. That would be smarter. Correction, it would be more smarter. Matrix metering now. Yeah, this is a good spot. Okay, let me. I want to try to catch them in flight. So let's use. Uh, Four thousandths of a second. Maybe six thousand. Eight frames per second. I think I'm gonna switch back to spot metering. I was playing with different settings and matrix did not work, spot metering did not work. And there was a stem around just swimming away. And the sun is right behind me. And it turned its head and I cut a nice expression and I used uh, plus 0.5 compensation and check this out. Compensation plus one. Again, matrix metering. Like right on the eye. Beautiful. Thank you, guys. See you later, alligators. Yeah, I'll come back. But I'm getting hungry since I've been up since five. Time now is time now is eight twenty six. Well, this is it. This is it. 
this was uh, Macassa Bay Yacht Club, right? And this was uh, another park. Mustang still sits intact, which is good. So yeah, I think I'll come here again. But right, this is the end of August. So things might change in uh, September. Maybe there'll be uh, uh, different birds. So now, you know, it's always good to kind of like, this was my reconnaissance mission, right? So now I know where to park, where I can go. So next time I can go, I can go on that long uh, trail under the bridge to the other side. Okay, sorry for my uh, ugly mug, but I didn't sleep very well. I drank coffee at about like five o'clock. Normally I don't drink it that late. And <laughs> I woke up at 2 and then my alarm was set for 5. Because I, I knew that the sunrise is at 6.45 so it, and it's about an hour drive for me from Cambridge to Hamilton. But anyway, so I just wanted to summarize. What did I learn today? Because, you know, you learn something with every mission, right? And I'm going to continue these uh, series of videos because to me it's really entertaining, you know, mostly I do them for myself. I enjoy walking among all this wildlife and exploring the, you know, the parks and the wildlife uh, reserves. It's really cool. Kind of like a, you know, active, active sort of running around. I'm walking with the camera, which is a good exercise too, because that lens is two kilos or four pounds, and the camera is uh, one and a half pounds or uh, about 600 grams. So it's like three kilos, you know. You're carrying it in my backpack. Uh, so what did I learn is that uh, metering, uh, kind of like. Sometimes, uh, most of the time, spot metering worked best, but then um, when I was shooting those birds at the end over there, uh, matrix metering was working better, and I, switch, I was switching back and forth, and then I just ended up using matrix metering with uh, exposure compensation, like most guys uh, you know, have this book by uh, Steve Perry, uh, Secrets to Wildlife Photography, uh, ebook, pretty good book. I forget how much I paid, like 10 bucks or something. Like this guy knows his stuff and he's using uh, matrix metering with exposure compensation pretty much all of the time. But spot metering, I learned from another guy, actually he's in Buffalo, New York and some other couple of other guys, they say, yeah, like forget it, we just use spot metering. Uh, but I think uh, from now on I'll be using matrix with exposure compensation. You know, like if you see a bird like, sitting on a branch like those sparrows over there, right, against the sky, like right away, you know, after a few shots, you already know. After you look at the histogram, you already know that you need plus one, you know. Then if it's somewhere very dark, like I find that I never use negative exposure compensation. For some reason, it's always plus. I always need to brighten the picture a little bit because the camera seems to underexpose, but actually, which is a good thing because it, uh, it captures more detail, right? Uh, second thing I wanted to say is that I definitely see an improvement compared to a D500, either because I, uh, I fine-tuned the lens, right, so now the focus seems to be more consistent, uh, and I, I don't care about the group of the focus, you saw that I was using all day, I was using uh, D21, Dynamic 21, and it seemed to be working fine, I can still move that central point to where I want it. And all the time I used uh, manual, manual mode, 
plus auto ISO. So auto ISO, based on what I learned from uh, what's his name, Tony. Like the guy has a channel with his wife, Tony, and uh, I forgot. But he's uh, he's a big advocate of using uh, the uh, extended low exposure. You know, like on my camera, it's it's 100. But if you look and if you start turning the dial more to the left, you see. Uh, like L3, L2, L1, whatever, it's like extended super low uh, exposure, which is kind of like artificial, but still, this guy Tony, he was doing all kinds of testing, and he said uh, it's actually beneficial. So, uh, because of this manual ISO, uh, manual mode plus auto ISO, I no longer limit my uh, ISO, I just went all the, you know, as wide as possible from this L1 or whatever like the lowest setting possible to maximum and then my shutter speed uh, is at auto like in that ISO control you know sometimes when I use let's say aperture priority or whatever and I set it to all the way to the left the slowest shutter speed because the stabilization seems to to work pretty pretty great on this uh, on this lens and so the colors look better like I really like this um, uh, auto picture control like I said I was using auto picture control plus one with the extra contrast and saturation but I didn't change the actual values inside that control I just went uh, I saw it had only plus one and plus two or like regular auto or but it's basically just standard right I wanted a bit more and so I chose plus one and that seems to work pretty great and so frames per, per second again I whole morning I have not missed 10 frames a second one bit you know like most of the time I was using 6 which is my slow continuous mode I, I program from 3 to 6 right and then I switched to 8 and it was too too much you know like I was trying to capture those those uh, flock of these uh, birds flying over the water and eight then you look in the back of the camera it just you know instead of like like i said yesterday in the video instead of two blurry pictures now we have four you know like <laughs> so i don't know and this thing i'm pretty sure that i nailed the problem with my uh, earlier images i really think that shutter speed i mean shutter button focusing uh works better with uh, moving uh, birds because it activates stabilization I don't care about battery life I have a second all I do is uh, I got a second battery so they always charged uh, but I was shooting with like three hours uh, I'm not sure how many shots I've taken but no problem but uh, I think st the stabilization was the issue with my earlier shots because I was using back button focusing so if you guys are uh, uh, seeing some weird results from your shooting just try to switch back if you're using back button focusing try to switch back to the traditional uh, shutter button and forget all this you know nonsense um, like there are some advantages right but like I was uh, the other day when like a couple of weeks ago I was trying to shoot a, a bird on a, on, a, on a branch and with a shutter, shutter button focusing the camera of course was refocusing each time and I wanted to focus on the branch because I knew I was waiting for the bird to come around and so I switched to back button focusing but that stupid bird was still sitting there behind the branch never came back so so anyway so now forget this back button focusing I'm I'm all for uh, traditional shutter button focusing because, because of stabilization and of course also I uh, uh, my previous shots were done in aperture priority because I was lazy you know I would just limit my ISO set the lower limit to 500 and the top was like I think like 32 or 3500 and then I would choose aperture priority 5.6 fully open and what happened is that I look at some of the images there from that Iroquois National Park wildlife park and even that there was a white bird this uh, heron flying on against the blue sky and I, I go into properties and details and I see that the shutter speed was one eight hundredth of a second that's way too low you know 
And that's what happens with the aperture priority. You know, like some of these people say, hey, yeah, use aperture priority because it, you control the, you know, the depth of field. Forget that. I think that, you know, shutter speed is much more important. And actually, this guy Steve Perry says that when he discusses these modes, you know, aperture priority, shutter priority, uh, he says that actually 90% or like, yeah, he says like 85, 90% of his shooting is done with manual plus auto ISO. And that's what I did. This The other thing I changed today is that I was doing that. And when I was shooting flying birds, I made sure that my shutter speed was pretty high. You know, when when I started, the sun was still behind the clouds. And I really like this mode now, you know. So I fully opened my ISO range from L1 to the maximum. I don't care. Like this camera, I do believe, is much better at uh, high ISO than D500. Just like DxO Mark says. And uh, so I don't care about how high uh, the ISO is. And so if I, I when I was shooting, yeah, the sun was behind the clouds. It was still dark. And it was just like the duck, right? Like slowly swimming in the water. So I know I don't need a huge shutter speed. So I just used, I forgot, 750 or 800th of a second. And it was clear. It was sharp, you know. But then the sun came up. Now I have more light. And when I was shooting these birds, I went all the way to like, 5,000 or even 6,000 of a second, you know? And that's, again, that's what is great about this camera because I was actually thinking about maybe I should just get D750 again. But on that camera, the top shutter speed is uh, 4 thousandths of a second. And for wildlife, uh, you know, that's great for weddings and, and, and burials and, and parties and stuff like that. But for wildlife, <laughs> I don't think it's enough. So all in all, very happy with the camera. Uh, of course, I just, you know, getting ready to get back and look at the pictures on my computer. But from what I saw on this back screen, uh, the colors are great, the saturation is great, contrast, you know, and I'll be definitely con continuing continuing this series. So same lens, but now the camera is D7500. So thanks for watching from Hamilton, Ontario. Sergey Drachev Photo out.